Mesdames et Messieurs, bonsoir et bienvenue à la Plume Dorée. Prenez place et accueillez chaleureusement vos animateurs préférés, Chibibri et Virtel. Hello, hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to another episode of The Golden Feather. Today we have episode 124. Uh, on this is um the third of third of June, right? Yeah, third of June, twenty twenty two, and we have our guest here. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, it's called Only Natural is our um, episode name because we're still talking about weather because it's still a lot to talk about. There was not enough time to cover everything last week, so here we go. Uh, we have our guest here, mm -hmm. uh, Bochi. How are you today, friend? I'm doing great, sir. Thank you for the invite. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. For Thanks for joining us. And uh, in case anybody was wondering, that was um, his lovely voice introing us today uh, in French. He's uh, from our northern neighbors up in Canada, otherwise known as Canada <laughs> on actual maps. Um, so, for a new friend, new friend, new friend. So, um, tell us, what? Oh, wait, actually, I almost forgot to introduce the lovely and talented Chibi Bree, partner in podcast in life. How are you today? I am doing well, especially now that work is over for the week. So oh, looking forward to relaxing yeah. and chatting about ashes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I almost forgot about you. I was I was all excited to just like dive right in because we, we cut our uh, episode That's short last week. That's quite all right. We were like quite mid conversation right. and we were just like, all right, we got to go. Okay, bye. I'm always <laughs> here. It's all good. <laughs> all right. So, um, Bochi, tell us what got you interested in ashes? What's uh, what's what's the big the big hook that you found that said you know what, I'm gonna like this game. Luck, I got I just got lucky here. Uh, for me, it's the last straw. It's the last chance. It's the last big MMO for me. I was pretty much done with gaming overall. I thought of going outside and playing outside, which could have been a mistake there. But by the oh, time I decided disasters. that in life. Disaster, yeah, yeah. Having to deal with real people. <laughs> but uh, basically, when I thought about dropping computer games in general overall, with everything that was happening, I saw something, I believe, on a post. Got very lucky here. And I thought it was a scam at first. I'm not going to lie, because it was just a few uh, lines of text. And I believe in 2017, like everybody else, I saw the Kickstarter, and I still thought it was a scam. I was like, this is too good to be true. The values, uh, the core values, what hooked me up, like you said, uh, were like mm -hmm. no paid win. Uh, uh, the, the, just the values of who who we're talking about, including Mr. Sharif and his team, everything seemed too good to be true. Not lying, transparency. I was like, whoa, this is definitely a scam. And when the for the second time, the, um, I guess second camp, uh, campaign for... Uh, a starter kicker the summer i'm not sure how they called it do you remember it was summer two kickstarter i think there's one. the original kickstarter and then there's the summer one yeah okay then the summer one when i saw that going then if, uh, there was already a few more youtube video about it and i just dove in i was like well let it let let this be the last play the last game in which i would like to invest a lot and i forgot about it when i gave money in in 2017 and then I believe it's in 219, which is weird. Again, I'm going to call it luck. I believe the lazy peon made a pretty good video that was covering what ashes or what it was going to be. And I was like, this looks interesting. And I didn't connect that that's the same company I gave my money in in 2017 because I had forgotten about it in two years. And when I looked about it, I was like, no, I already have an account. This is weird. And I was like, this is the game I gave money to. It, it didn't look the same at all from what I read on paper. It looks so much better. Right. It, it, yeah, it grew way faster than I thought. So that's when I really dove in. So 219 is when I actually dove in for all, I believe, all the right reason. Okay, okay. Well, hey, sometimes mm. you just got to be cautious because I uh, I thought it was kind of scammy at first just because all those points were, were selling points of uh, my ideal game that I was trying to find and couldn't find out there so there was a kickstarter and it had all my favorite uh, wannabe features that I'd, I'd love to cram into one single box and i said you know what there's no way this is for real but you know i put in i put in a small bit at first in the beginning of the month 
And for the rest of the Kickstarter, I did nothing but watch stuff about Ashes and get involved with the community and talk to people. And by the end of the month, I said, yeah, I upped my package a couple levels. <laughs> I had to. I'll go ahead and buy in. And it's funny linking up and their first web page they had, not the one they had, not the current uh, website, one of the main features they, they applied for within the first few lines, they were talking about the weather system. I was like, this has never mm. been done. I remember this and I was like, this is cool. I'm not a big, I can PVP, I can do a lot, but for me, farming, gathering, building stuff is what I really liked. And when I said a season for cooking in my, in my head, like you said, the perfect game, I was like, this is going to be too good to be true. And they just released that last week. Yep. They just showed it to us. Amazing. Yeah, I um, I feel a little awkward in this conversation because <laughs> I would be um, the the naive young person that was like, "This game sounds awesome." I didn't even hesitate. Honestly, I just it sounded really cool, so I was like, "I'm gonna back it." I didn't even there was no hesitation. Honestly. <laughs> I'm going to talk for Verdict and myself here. You didn't hesitate because you didn't get burned before. I bet you Verdict yeah. got burned a few times. I got burned a few times. Big boxes. That's the only reason we didn't jump in Build Feed 4. Mm. Yeah, I'd never yeah, done a Kickstarter before. That was my first time Kickstarting. And I had never been a part of like backing something before. Um, and I actually saw Lazy Peon's video before I decided to try to jump it. Actually, that's actually how I met that dude. Well, I mean, he's above me in, in Zoom, so I keep forgetting. <laughs> Over there, I think. I don't know. Over there. Somewhere. Um, but I met him because I joined in the Discord, and it was like the day after the Kickstarter ended. And I was like, no, I missed it. Uh, but it was because I had just finished my finals, and I saw Lazy Peon's video. And I was like, that looks amazing. That was like way better than wow. I want to go play that game. When is that game coming out? <laughs> I want to go and, do that um, over there. Yeah. So then I joined the Discord, and that's when I met Vertec, and we hung out a lot, and we've been here ever since. I guess it's pretty much been like the this is my main game that I'm going to be playing. All these other games are side games. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. EQ three. EQ3. Womp womp. Eh. I don't know Landmark, though. I did hear about EQ3, though. But, uh, yeah, it's just one of those things where it sounded really cool. It looked really cool. And then, yes, the graphics have changed tremendously. If we could do a side to side with uh, back in 2017 versus 2020, man, talk about a glow up from a company. Wait, am I... Have you tried uh, Apocalypse? Is that what you're referring to? Have I tried what? Apocalypse. I can't pronounce that correctly. Oh, oh Apocalypse. Apocalypse. Apoc, yes. Yeah. Apoc. Yeah. Because Apoc was horrible from a Canadian. From my point of view, the connection was so bad. That's when I thought it was like, this is oh, a scam. No. Like, I was getting disconnected every 20 seconds. I'm like, this is not professional. This is garbage. I was so reluctant. And then Alpha One came again. Graphic was like, this is so much better. The connection was amazing. And now yeah. we've seen UE5. Oh, wow. I'm going to stop. I'm going to hide being already on my own here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, by the way, uh, Theater Elf over there uh, responded back to you that uh, the EQ3 landmark thing, it was it was something else that hit like a, a crowdfunding thing. Like, come on, help us out. Toss some money at it. And it just kind of popped like a balloon and just deflated out of nowhere. Just poof, gone. Mm. Oh, yeah. sorry. I hope you didn't get burned by that, Peter. I, I, I haven't heard of that one. Sorry. I've been living on their rock. Yeah, if <laughs> I recall correctly, uh, that one, was that the one, um, Theater Elf, was that the one that was like a Minecraft, but in EverQuest world? Like more more 3D and, and high res graphics, but still very Minecraft. You had to go down, chop down trees to get materials to build houses and everything, just like uh, Minecraft. Mm. But, uh, yeah, yeah. I think but, uh, I think that was it. The we'll see. The APOC thing was uh, something they were putting out for free. It wasn't anything like Alpha One specific. Um, that one was just trying to get people to come in and just literally try to break shit, <laughs> like break our game, break the server. Uh, like, where are all the holes that we need to fill before we put out Alpha One, essentially, and. Um, and I mean, I honestly don't enjoy games like 
um, Apex or uh, what's the other one? That that other big one. I'm not really. Borderland. No, no, the Borderlands okay. It's the one where uh, it starts with an F. Come on. I'm not a neutral. It's We're literally what your Final Fantasy. 14. Everybody thought that. No, no, no. It's what everybody thought Apoc was supposed to be off of. Starts with an F. Oh, uh, Fortnite. <laughs> yes, Fortnite. I, I don't play those games, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, come on, it's right there. Yeah, Fortnite. Um, yeah. But too many people yeah, are calling it a Fortnite clone. Yeah, they thought it was a Fortnite clone, which they were just trying to, uh, I guess, test out corruption and like combat in general and see what like what the holes were and what needed to be fixed and stuff like that. Um, and so it was just a giant public test realm, if you will. And um, y- you were able to get cosmetics for participating in it. So that's part of the only reason why I was in there. <laughs> um, and then you know alpha one came out and as you mentioned there was like a big jump in graphic change from apoc to alpha one and then now there's i'm I'm feeling like there's another jump as we get closer to alpha two um things are looking more crisp things are sounding more crisp um but definitely if you remember the kickstarter videos that's what i was referring to is like the kickstarter video versus now huge difference yeah i think i think um Theater Elf actually re- responded that that sort of that landmark was supposed to be something to help fund and build e- uh, EverQuest Three, but then they made it into its own separate oh. game. But I think that that landmark suffered the same problems that um, <laughs> Ashes of Creation's Apocalypse did, and that was bad explanations hmm. on what was actually happening, because Apocalypse was mm. only supposed to be a testing ground specifically designed to test combat to test the servers, to just burn down whatever they needed to burn down to see what they needed to fix and make the experience better for the actual MMO. Mm -hmm. And apparently it was basically the same thing. Yeah, you're supposed to design assets for EQ3 with Landmark. And yeah, I thought it was actually like, oh, this is what EverQuest 3 is going to be. Because that's what I thought. That's what I gathered from everything I read about it. This this was EverQuest 3 was going to be Minecraft. And so mm-hmm. I just didn't want to touch it. I, said, I can no, see the confusion. I'm not, not going to get anywhere the, near that. Same thing with Diablo 4 and Immortal, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah that's, that's probably what, what happened with, um, with Apocalypse. It's just bad marketing and explanation on exactly what was going on. And it didn't quite get the point across that, hey, this is kind of just for, just for crits and giggles. We're just having fun here designing some assets, getting out there, testing some combat, testing the network, and improving yeah. what we need to improve for the, the real launch. Yeah. Sorry, I liked the crits and giggles. That, that was <laughs> Just for crits and giggles. Nice. <laughs> but um, to circle back to you, friend, um, mm-hmm. tell us. We bumped into you due to... Um, we were searching out everybody during alpha one that was even talking about the alpha, like just, Mm -hmm. just any conversations happening on Twitch. Are you looking to stream going forward? Are you looking to, to actually be a content creator or are you just kind of having fun with it and just streaming when you can, when it, when it launches out? Yes. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Uh, Yes. Kind to both. Uh, I I would love to stream some more uh, to keep busy as uh, mm. it, it depends if health with, will uh, let me uh, do the hours, we'll, we'll see. But I, I do have access to Alpha 2, and as soon as that comes out, I think we're gonna see hundreds, if not more, of channels on Twitch with one, two, three viewers. I'll be among them for sure. I'll try to push out a lot more content, but I'm not, what you're, you guys are doing, I'm gonna give you uh, flowers here. What you guys are doing is hard work. You're planning, you got timings, you, it's not a job, I get it, but you, you Submerg, uh, PGN, uh, Paradox Gaming Network, Mr. Jalan, there's a lot of you guys putting a lot of effort. I will never be part, of, I believe, of that group. I am more on the fun side, more on the family, let's just be friend. Uh, but I'll definitely be there for Alpha 2, yes. You will see me around. All right. Very excited well, for that. Definitely keep in contact with us because that's the type of people we want to, we want to have around. Because 
East Coast. We, Again, I like to permit that. I, I'm going to be for sure 100 on an East Coast server if it reaches you out to you. Are you? Uh, yeah, yep, well, we are on the East Coast. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're going to be is East Coast. Yep. Okay, I'm going to bring another subject here. I'm jumping to guns, and you can put me back in my place anytime. But if we're going to go East Coast, I would like to be on the same server as as many people as possible. But here's a, a subject for the site here. There's going to be two days, I believe, given in advance for those who've got a Alpha One package or before. Is that it? I think it was two I or three so. days. Yeah. Two days, two I believe. Days. Yeah. Let's start. Before I know, it's a lot of this stuff are going to be locked in, so there's no pay to win. It's more of a pay to see or pay to advantage. I'm not sure how you want to qualify it. But are you going to stay mm -hmm. on one of those server? Or are you boycotting this? That's not a good idea. And only starting. I'm going to be on one of those. To be honest, yeah. And you're not going to switch I, after yeah. two days. Probably not. But and I mean, we can be we'll on the same see. server. <laughs> we still have to wait and see what our guild does because I I I yeah. will have a character on the the Head Start server for sure. I know people call mm -hmm. it. Uh, pay to win and whatever but eh. everything yeah. everything's going to be time gated not in a I, harsh way but if the nodes cannot yeah, grow as fast as you want and the time you want there's no way you're going to be able to level and process right like, yeah none of the nodes yeah. are going to be advancing it's going to be players leveling only but the only positive part is you're going to get some levels ahead of everybody two or two to three days worth when they say it's going to take a month or two to get to max level with with normal gaming right so nodes aren't going to grow people are just going to go up a couple of levels maybe say 10 levels if they push hard like hard yeah we've, 15, we've got somebody here at, at in chat thinks it's pay to win is it actually pay to win today in advance when everything's locked out except the levels yeah and see that's the thing is i mean i'll respect whatever if ever anybody thinks in their own mind that it is pay to win i don't see it as pay to win because to be honest one of the reasons i don't want to go to a regular server is i don't want all that congestion i don't want to log in on the mm -hmm. same day everybody else does and be locked in the very beginning spot for an entire day not making any progress so everybody gets a crap experience Everybody gets a crap experience instead of some people getting a couple days advance to move out of the starting area. Okay, I'm gonna and ask where other people get some too. time to move out of the starting area. Because I didn't do my research yeah. enough. Are they gonna go like wow and do some sort of uh, sharding for the first few days or first few weeks? No, they said they're they're not really gonna try to. They're not. They're trying to avoid doing any kind of shard type play at all. Okay, so like they they don't want to do instancing. Then you're right. The first. Uh, regular servers <laughs> might have issues on day one or two or the first week for sure no clan dennis i'm admitting that if some people pay ahead of time to get in earlier everybody gets a better experience thus they paid for everybody to win and again mm. it's not a race it's not mm. a rush it's a marathon if you want to put four hours a day every day yeah. and again I mean, hardcore I know hardcore people are going to get honestly hardcore people if 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 the experience level and experience rate stays the same as it is in the alpha, which I highly doubt it's going to be, in two to three days, they're going to be ten levels ahead of everybody else. That's it. You're going to, they're going to be, literally be out of the starting areas, and that's all they're going to have is out of the starting areas. If if they go hard, but also the other thing to consider is, all right, so because you can't log in for like this is just my food for thought. Uh, if you can't log in for two days because somebody who backed it a long time ago was awarded that um, thing, um, yeah, there's there's that too, Gruntag. Thank you. Uh, but yeah. I'll, I'll circle back around to that. Um, the other thing to consider is, in my humble opinion, you only have a super advantage, quote unquote, um, for having two day head start if you never miss a single day. However, that's not realistic. People get sick. People go on vacation. Um, there's going to be a day or two eventually that you miss. And that's going to be a day or two where everybody else gets to advance past you, in my opinion. So I don't know. Uh, with the node experience levels being turned off and stuff like that, it's literally just character development at that point. In which case, honestly, Everybody who's currently live with uh, the latest end game for 
Final Fantasy XIV has advantage on me because they've been playing since the beginning of the expansion update uh, drop. And uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's thank you. <laughs> Point number two. Point number two. Um, I'm going to actually go ahead and start highlighting some of these. Um, but mm. uh, somebody's got to catalog what happens in the first 48 hours, right? Right? Well, live stream it all. <laughs> the first 48 Including uh, my just, head hitting the I desk mean, after like 12 hours. Thunk. Well, there's also going to be like um, just nobody's going to be able to play all of that time, you know? And if even if they do, if they end up missing two days later, it, to me, that's evened out. That's two days that you got to play that they didn't, you yeah, know? Yeah. But as Gruntag mentioned, um, not that one. This one, sorry. Where is it? There it is. Uh, they'll be marked. You'll know which ones are head start. So if you have a problem with it, just avoid those. Yeah. And I mean, like I said, I can, I'm not going to dog anybody for their opinion on that. I mean, by all means, if you think it's oh, a, no, absolutely a not. pay to win or an unfair advantage, by all means. I mean, you're, you're allowed to think that way. I, I have nothing against you. I'm not going to call you a dummy or anything because you're not. That's that's how you mm-hmm. feel. That's how you feel. And that's why they're marking them out and separating them and making sure that yep. only certain ones have a head start. That way, your experience doesn't get spoiled by that because it's a valid, exactly. it's a valid concern. It would be pay to win if issue. only those yes. servers would be available, but they're marked. So if you don't want it to be yeah. pay to win, don't jumpstart on servers that have the two days advantage. If you didn't get that, go on a, uh, one of the other ones and then there's no pay to win for nobody. Yeah, yeah. Because mm-hmm. I mean, I'll, I'll be fully honest. Even if I wasn't starting on uh, with the, the head start myself, I would still join, join a head start server just because I won't have those extra on a 10,000 person server. There could be upwards of, you know, a thousand people. Who knows? Like yeah. 10% of your, yeah. your login base could be those who paid to get in early or those who got a, uh, uh, the word, a code to get in to alpha early or something like that. Like, you know, you never know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if I get people- right. this right, Ver- uh, Vertec, you and I and everybody that's got access to the two day head starts, we're all going to get a shooting experience because we're all going to be all of us on the same server trying to punch out at the same time. So the only winners are those who are going to choose two days afterwards to join the head stop server. Everybody else is going to have a harsh experience at well, way too many players. Honestly, I think like, um, Hey, by the way, there, Umbra. Is there any idea at lunch at this point? I haven't been tracking this game in a while. Uh, we'll we'll circle around to that. Yeah, yeah. Waiting on it. Don't know for sure. Uh, the idea that everyone has yeah. is the beginning of next year is Alpha Two. There's zero confirmation, zero legitimate word from the studio on that. But that's that's what everyone's mm-hmm. thinking. That's the that's the core theory. But uh, no, like every launch with every game, the real winners are going to be those that decide to wait a week after official launch to even begin to log in because all the bugs are going to be knocked out there's going to be all the the crashes of servers all the i couldn't move for 20 minutes because i logged in and there's so much congestion that i couldn't get frame rates and they had to bring the server down and fix it and yada all that's going to be knocked out of the way there's going to be you know clear paths on you know, hey, this over here is starting to develop. This one here is going to starting to I'm develop. I'm going to stop you there. You're start. You're, mm-hmm. you're scaring me. I really hope they do their due diligence to fix this in Alpha Two or all the spot testing. They will have no excuse from this end if they cannot offer a proper lunch. Yeah. See, and that's the thing I'm hoping for. That's what I'm hoping for. But I'm planning for the worst. Absolutely planning for the worst because every launch. They all have that same amount of time, right? They all have that testing time. They all have their beta period. And yeah, it wouldn't be a proper MMO if it launched perfectly clean. There's <laughs> got to be some kind of an issue. There has to be. Or else it really is a scam and you're only playing with yourself and 9,999 bots that are interacting like actual human beings. That's but like it's just the a saying we have... You're, that's like the saying we have, you're not a true Ashes streamer until you have tech issues. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If you don't have audio issues, then you're just you're not actually streaming. <laughs> Ashes. Um, actually, I want to pull this up real quick, if that's okay. Just a a, sub- a mini subject top. Um, mm-hmm. but we have a new person. Hello, Techmo. By the way, welcome in. 
Um, and they were saying that they would like to play Alpha, but um, they haven't bought a package because they haven't released a pack that they 100% like. Now, um, I backed in the Kickstarter. I think you did too, Fauci. Um, and I know Vertec did, but let's say we didn't. Let's say uh, you waited until there was a package. Has there been a package yet that you liked 100%? Because there hasn't been for me. <laughs> there have been a couple for Not 100%. me. Not 100%. I've liked everything. Yeah. yeah. There's been a couple that I've liked everything. But in the entire time since they started doing the cosmetics in what, 2018? Or was it late 2017? I forget. Either way, it's close to four or five years mm -hmm. now. In that entire time, there's been maybe, I could say, six, six sets, maybe five, that I've mm -hmm. said I, I like everything, literally everything that's in the pack. So I can I can definitely see the you know wait until you get one that's that you really like all the stuff for because I mean if you're paying that much money, you should probably like everything you're getting. Yeah. Right. That's fair. I'm trying to find the months, but there were at least for me minimum two. I believe it was a December okay. one. It was the one with the icy bowls and the plated cold armor. For me, really mm -hmm. did it. The entire pack, including the temple in it. I cannot pull it off. I'm not quick enough on this thing. And the second one, That's okay. uh, it had a, um, I'm going to call it a Lord of the Ring, red evil vibe. It had a, a big <laughs> a tall tower, black, a dead horse, and a kind of a skeleton yep. crew. That was the COVID. That was the COVID set. Yeah, that was the last one um, they released before COVID locked everything down. I call that the Corona a Corona yeah. Pony. I did appreciate yeah. that, those oh, two for God. sure. There's more. There's, I could probably go up to four or five or six of them, like Vertec, and push my money into it. But uh, I got lucky. Mm. I have one of the summer ones. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, I for, for one, it's not that I didn't uh, the Corona Pony. Yeah, yeah, we didn't know what else to call it. It was, it was, it was, it was something. Um, <laughs> but um, honestly, I there's been a few that I like most of them, but there hasn't been one where I liked everything, absolutely everything. Um, so I mean, I definitely do get that. Um, but I think also some of the packages, the tiers that they had, like the Alpha One package was uh, included some other things that made it a little bit more worth it. At one point, I believe there was some game time that was included in one of the packages and stuff like that. So uh, that was really cool. But one thing, and I don't know if you know this, but uh, if you have a forum account, I think it is, you can use your affiliate link or your referral link. And if your friends were to buy anything from Ashes of Creation, like a package or anything, you would get a percentage of that, which you could put towards game time. Uh, well, not really game time, but uh, yeah, yeah, game time. There's no box cost. That's my brain mixed that up. There's no box cost. Yep. There's just game time cost. So you could put that towards game time. And that's pretty cool, I think. Um, but and yeah, theater elf, same thing. That blue, that blue witchy one. I really like that one. Yeah. Sleepy Hollow one. Sleepy Hollow, oh, love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here, for yeah. Here for the Harry There's Potter. Here for the Harry Potter. Two oh, that I absolutely yes. loved that I ended up not buying anything from because just finances didn't work out well those months. This one. And it this made one me is really, the one really that sad. I've missed. This is the one that got away for me. The, the Fox, Fox of the, of the Pyre. Pyre. That, that's the one that got away but it's okay hello I look there, forward by to the seeing way. an altar the artist Malord Malord I'm glad uh, you could join she... us we will be um, we will be talking with you for sure about that music stuff Yes. just saying we We've did see the disgusting notice. stuff yeah we did see the message <laughs> on twitter by the way uh, just didn't get a chance to mm -hmm. reach him back out and saying yeah, yeah yeah send stuff send stuff um, yeah. yeah, if you already got something cooked up, by all means, you'd love to check it out. Mm -hmm. Trying to gather as much uh, um, Ashes community music as possible. We've been over here brainstorming like crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that are, I guess you could say, in the pot and preparing to be cooked, but not quite ready yet. Yeah, so. not quite ready yet, but getting there. 
you gotta give us some more. What is this? I gotta defend those who can only write right now. What are you talking about? What, <laughs> what are those secret projects? A hint, something, a book, a game? <laughs> um, a hint, a complete overhaul of the Golden Feather Tavern. There's your hint. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be some <laughs> some visual changes, we'll say. Yeah, for sure. And also, you know, <laughs> so finally getting caught up on the videos. Oh, we need an editor. YouTube uploads. Yeah, we need a video editor in a big way. We need help. But hey, <laughs> we need help. <laughs> uh, so there was a lot that we talked about. There's a lot mm -hmm. that they talked about. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. Do, do we what's yeah you got the dynamic weather going on there steven is indeed running around on a vec <laughs> so there's that which makes Yay. vertex super excited it does um, it does I, I i hope that's the stature that they were talking about that little bit of a just that little bit of a stoop and not like full-on oh stature yeah i'm an old crony type of stoop <laughs> As long as it's just that little bit of little bit of hunchbackiness, I'm I'm happy with it. I like it. Add some character. Yeah. What what character class or race are you looking forward to the most? About you, if it ain't till now. Oh, till there it is. Life. Yeah, that's fair. As if that, on that, cue. that answered it. I, I gotta yeah. see it. I, I gotta wait for Alpha Two, for to see what <laughs> everything or every class is gonna look like. Uh, what every race is gonna look like. But again, I, I, I'm not That's hoping fair. for this game to min-max anything. I'm not going to be a, a, a big number guy. I'm going to go with mm -hmm. just pleasure and story. So just for these two reasons alone, uh, the main character has to be a Tolnar. Those that got left behind. I got to go with the outcasts for what is for me the horde or the back people. Those that were forgotten. Okay. Okay. So the race has, has been chosen I like, like that. this. Not that it's better or anything. We don't know anything about stats. We don't know oh, anything right. about like bonuses or or what's going to be better for which class for min maxing. I don't care. Tolnar mm -hmm. has to be the race, and for uh, the class, I'm a bit lucky. Uh, I believe he's in here still. At Clan Dennis, he's a hardcore player. He's a sweaty, so I don't have to do my research on, on what's best. He's going to be that, so I can be anything, and I know I'll be able to progress just behind him. So for yeah. me, mm -hmm. uh, the Sentinel. Is gonna be it. I don't care what it looks like. I just read the description. A ranger with a little bit of tank as an offset a spice or flavor. That's perfect for me. I don't care what it's gonna do. That's gonna be me. That's fair. There you go. There uh, you go. For me, oh. uh, sorry. Uh, I, I was just gonna cap that off by saying um, that uh, the the Tolnar thing. If anyone's gonna have the most rich history tied to Vera, it's going to be the Tolnar as well. They were there the entire time. They never left. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Um, I was going to say for me, it is the um, the Pyre. Doing the Pyre. Yep. See, my lord's on my team over here. Team Pyre. Uh, <laughs> never. <laughs> um, but Tecma says, honestly, I prefer the human race, but I've been thinking of playing an elven race. Ooh. And Gruntag says, I'm ready for some footage of my race, the Renkai. Um, now, we've seen sneak peeks of the Renkai where um, we've noticed there's some dragon scale like things. So I'm very interested in seeing what they're going with with that. Um, mm. I don't know. Very, very excited to see stuff. the development. I believe for race, yeah. it's not going to matter much. I, uh, I'm always looking at the bigger picture, and citizenship is going to be the thing. So whoever, whatever which race is in, is in bigger number, that's what the city is going to look like, if I understood correctly. Mm. So whatever you mm -hmm. pick, it won't matter. If you're not the biggest number at that location when the uh, for the first stage one who does the most quests, it won't get your structure, so it doesn't really matter, I guess. I, unless you're your household, right? Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah. I was like, I remember it being primary, like, whoever is the predominant race for the node. Yeah, whoever contributes um, the most to uh, the leveling of the node at that point. Yeah. Mm
contribution towards that. Okay, but is that do we know, is it just from like level zero to level one? Or is it when we reach level three, like a crossroad or something or higher village? Is that when it gets decided? Uh, from how I understand it, and we'll have to check out uh, the wiki to, you know, verify. But from what I understand, every time it goes to level up, it's going to check and see which race has the most influence. And it could change every time. Yeah, every time it levels up. Ashes Nera says every time it levels up, but I'm uh, I'm 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 th trying to threaten the bot non-verbally because I did exclamation mark wiki and the, it did not pull up the wiki. <laughs> oh no! I'll see if I can re <laughs> kick it in the pants and get it to restart here. Um. Mm -hmm. But um, speaking of which, here's uh, or speaking of uh, Tolnar and whatnot, here's a conversation I found on the forums. Involving weather and underrealm and magical storms and such. So with the weather system, how do you think that's going to play into the underrealm? Because they won't be able to experience quite the exact same as everything above ground, right? I hope it doesn't. I really hope they thought about it and it, that it doesn't affect her to a minimum or le like a lesser extent. Hmm. Yeah, so well, yeah. the thing I was also thinking about is instead of it being, say, like a rainstorm happening, it's gonna end up having, you know, drips coming from the ceiling, right? Because it's filtering through all the ground and then getting to the underrealm portion. But there's probably gonna be fairly established drip patterns and are going to end up building stalactites because they drip down and whatnot and more of the wetter areas are going to have more of the fungus and everything so they could actually legitimately build the under realm of flora around where the water would filter through on a normal basis and it you could see mm. that certain areas are going to have a lot more a lot more of a quote-unquote rainfall just from it dripping through the the ground right I'm going to keep hoping here and we're going to see an alpha two if we get any underground at all because from what i've seen we, we're going to get like the bottom portion of the uh, portion of the map for alpha two about half of it but if we do get any in there underground uh, uh, for me the vision i have is like a fifth season we got four season on top and that, that rotates and i hope they're going to go with a, about a two-week rotation for each season again i've never read anything about it if it's been confirmed or anything i think right now they're aiming at the one week uh, rotation which according to Mr. Uh, Jalon, it's going to be an issue for uh, Castle Siege. It would mean that you you would always be in the same season for attacker defending, which could be uh, an advantage for those defending, but I didn't give thought to that. But I hope that the bottom layer is going to have a, a fifth season, always the same, a, a different zone where only some, some very specific vegetables or garden can be grown down there that none of the above could have. So it's going to encourage trade routes from top to bottom and not just from top to top. Mm. Yeah, see, I think... Um, I think, um... Sorry. Oh, no, you go ahead. I think what the original poster was trying to... Uh, just fine. Was trying to say was, uh, what if during, like, the cold, rainy seasons, it made it more misty and foggy down in the Underrealm because of the changes of climate in, in the um, above-ground area? Um, and... Uh, thank you. You fixed it. Um, <laughs> and basically, um, I think they're trying to think of how that's going to affect the Underrealm with the, um, I'm going to, lack of a better word, Overrealm having climate changes and, and things like that. Um, and I almost imagine like when it's the wet season, there's more flora because it's wet. Like I think mushrooms and moss kind of grow where there's more moisture. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm pretty excited actually by that idea. <laughs> yes, I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, in the Underrealm, it's probably going to be a lot more fog based as well. Mm -hmm. Because you figure fog settles in valleys, right? And valleys, the, the extreme valley is going to be in a cave going under the ground. So I have a feeling there's going to be a ton of fog down there during the the really rainy and really wet and cold times mm -hmm. very foggy seasons but uh 
Yeah, like like you were saying about the the seasons lasting one week. I think one week is is probably a, a bad idea for a bunch of reasons. Like you like you said, uh, Jalan was talking about because then sieges for the castles are going to be on the same week. Like the the once a month timers are always going to have the same ho- or the same weather every single time. But mm. the extending it out for say two weeks would end up making sure that it kind of rotates through all of them. Well, we also talked about what if you go on vacation for a week, you miss an entire season. Done. Gone. Yeah, you miss an entire season. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Plus, Uh, uh, I believe it's uh, NARC uh, that pointed that out. But if they were to bring it to a month, that would only be for the hardcore people. And if they bring it to a week, it would be just for the too much softcore. I'm not sure how to say that, though. That only like like uh, casual players. So the end between mm. would have to be two or three weeks per season. Again, not to miss it and to be able to enjoy it and actually make it sparse. Is that the word? Like uh, make sure those things sparse. are sparse. Yeah, yeah sparse. Yeah, see, it, think... it depends, I guess, where you are from. <laughs> spoon, spoon, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah I think uh, the the one week time frame even would feel really condensed to a casual player because if they can't log on more than maybe a, say a couple of hours in one week because they just have family stuff come up then they miss an entire season and they'll have to wait three more weeks to get to that season if they're trying to gather certain things that are only really beneficial or only really benefited by you know one or two seasons and they're absolutely destroyed by trying to gather in another season mm-hmm um, so. I was also going to say, I believe in the, one of the more recent live streams, Steven had mentioned just casually two or three weeks for uh, the rotation of seasons. Like yeah, he'd kind of like slipped it in there. <laughs> yeah, I do know at least when, when it came up about the seasons being one week, he said that it was still going to be uh, under testing and you know things are going to be experimented with for a while etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm-hmm. yeah absolutely and theater says i think three weeks would make it variable for you uh so you won't have to have the same re- season at the same time each month which i agree because uh having a little bit more of a variation would be just nice to deal with um instead of like oh it's the first it's the first half of the month, so it's either this season or it's that season. It's the second half of the month, so it's either this season or it's that season. Um, and I mean, that's only given the four seasons. There's, you know, y- there might be other things, you know, but also I believe they mentioned the diversity in the seasons. Mountains might get snow, but the desert might get a lot of wind and rain. Um, so there's going to be like a slight diversity in terms of what winter looks like, depending on what part of the climate you're in. I'm going here uh, off tangent here again for the seasons. Were we confirmed that it were only going to be four seasons or are they going to go like surprise us with five or six seasons? That could mess it up. Hmm. Yeah, that could very well toss it in. I have a feeling that it's probably going to be your standard four seasons because anytime they've mentioned the names of any seasons, they've kind of rotated through all four of those, like, you know, spring, winter, summer, fall. And, Mm -hmm. um, so I think, I think it's probably going to end up with just the standard four, but like, uh, theater elf was saying there, um, wow, I'll go ahead and add that one on there. (laughs) <laughs> but yeah like theater was saying um three weeks would make it nice and variable because two weeks i think even you were mentioning that just a moment ago uh tv where if it's two weeks per season the first two weeks of every month are going to be either spring or fall and the last two weeks are going to be either summer or winter mm-hmm. and then uh, if you make it three weeks at least then it's going to vary it a little bit more so that the last week uh Welcome. Mm-hmm. Welcome in Tecmo. Yeah, and then the the Sorry. last one would end up being a different a different uh let's see, how would that work here? It's three, 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 three. Yeah, I think it would work out to if, if like the fourth week of every month were to be the castle siege, then it would literally just rotate through all four seasons. 
before it comes mm. back around. I think that's how it would end up working out. All right. All honest. three of us, we voted. We agreed. We just have to let Steven know about this now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> three weeks. Um, just the top part of the season chat. I, I, I shared this as well. Um, sorry. Did you do? Okay. So they're saying some biomes will have seasons that are less or more temperate. So for example, north, south, and tropical regions. Other biomes will be fixed climates. Um, so that kind of goes to possibly under realm having a fixed climate. Who's to say? Biomes that are affected by seasonal cycles may experience drastic visual differences between seasons. So that tells me that there might be biomes that aren't affected by seasonal cycles. Again, with a fixed mm -hmm. climate. Uh, events may radically change the current season uh, time, a zone is in or elongate it. And this includes weather changes. Um, there may be magical seasons where you might be in a tropical zone and then suddenly it's snowing. Uh, and then, of course, the things about like the items, crops, cycles, buildings, etc., cetera, um, gaining a certain buffs or debuffs in certain seasons and so on. But if you guys want to read more, I, I, I sent out the link for the wiki. So there's there's more information there. But um, yeah, it, it sounds definitely possible that I mean, and plausible that not much will change when you're underground because there's you're not exposed to the air above you're not exposed to all of the cold weather now the the heat rises and so if it's freezing outside above you it might be i like obviously colder in in the under realm but you also never know if there's maybe natural hot springs that keep it warm down there extra icy. lots to s surmise on yeah so yeah lots of Lots of please just bring us alpha two so I can see what the stuff is all about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, um, yes. And I didn't miss this, but Malord asks, is alpha two supposed to be uh, lasting until launch? And um, TL for, uh, replied with saying it's supposed to become the test server later. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's the, the just first to bring persistent. That up. <laughs> phase that's going to be lasting. Mm -hmm. Up the alpha to level 35, I believe. So we will test those subclasses. Can't wait. Yeah. Yeah. Can't wait. Oh, man. And that's I don't know if you remember last... Vic. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know if you've seen it last... Uh, well, it's actually in your demo, I believe. And Steven says, while doing it, it's, it looks like a black and green wheel going forward. And he says, this is not for you. This is just for me. It's my own power or something. I believe yeah. this is BS. I think it's too good to be true. I believe that's going to be an augmented spell from another class for teleport. Like, let's say you're, you're a tank with it, like a necromancer. I don't know. I don't know which mix is going to make it, but I believe that step forward is going to be used in game for one of our classes. It's just a flavor. There's too much effort that got put into that animation for just to be his for one quick show. <laughs> well, I think you said it was going to be like the, the GM or God powers or something, right? So that could totally be like flashy for them to pop in and like run through and like unstuck somebody like this dash. Th Can you imagine you're, you're adventuring through uh, a dungeon and someone just flashes through with that move? Just Flash. It was crazy, but yeah, it would be nice if it were an augmented one because it looks really cool. It looks like you're actually running, and there's just a big green, and what green, was it green and black or green and purple? I forget. I'm a bit colorblind, but it looked green and black to me when he spinned out going forward. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Sunfrog, I couldn't Sunfrog help it. it. <laughs> um, but. Just to touch quickly on this, the subject of seasons that we were just on, Sunfrog says uh, seasons could have random lengths. For example, spring is seven days, summer is 12, fall nine, winter 15. That way, one month could never be the same. Season lengths could be RNG or would be RNG in that case. I think that's a good idea too. Um, but. Yeah, I think that'd be kind of yeah. neat if. Um if they set no. it to like 
instead of just being exactly, you know, 21 days, like three weeks, what if it were, you know, 16 to 24 days or something? Mm-hmm. Could randomly mm-hmm. be about three weeks, but not exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that idea. Exactly, I like the exactly. thinker and what it's doing. I liked what Tecmo wrote earlier that uh, that dynamic weather update was just amazing, especially when we see the wind flowing and um, like they have it sped up. So I feel like it's a little unnatural looking at times because the the sp- there's a speed up of weather to get it to transition. Yes, Pepper. Hello, this Pepper. Is doggo. <laughs> doggo um, says hi. Oh, um, 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 um. Um, okay. um, um, um. Uh, love, check, check your Discord. Uh. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Um, but uh, yeah. I just I thought that was really really cool, and that was something that we all were super excited about. Um. Because, I mean, this is right their first time actually showing off weather outside of the happy holidays from um, Intrepid. It was more than that. They also showed like a all new climate for us in UE5 because the only thing we had seen in mm-hmm. December was the mountains or somewhere in the mountains. So that, right. that was like, again, can't wait for altitude because it's going to show any spot testing to that because they haven't done any in a while. And I think they've done that on purpose because they don't want us to see UE5 right now. But I can't yeah. wait. Alpha 2 is going to be the bomb. That's oh, going to be yeah, awesome. Yeah, I agree. Cannot wait. There's going to be but... so much that's changed. So uh, that actually, since we're talking about Alpha 2, takes me back to Gruntag's uh, response earlier. Hello, Keybind, A2 hype indeed. Uh, Gruntag says, I really enjoyed testing in Alpha 1, even though it was bare bones, mostly backend testing. And I mean, I feel like, uh, despite, I guess, they just got into UE5 this year, um, despite that, there was a lot of things that they needed to test to get it ready for A2, but you know, um, I imagine they're going to have spot testing or whatever for um, E2 ahead of time with some of the A1 people um, to make sure that everything's working well before they open it up to a whole new group of people. And um, I'm excited. I'm just, I'm really excited to see what A2 is like. I'm really excited to see what UE5 feels like on the computer, um, especially because I'm realizing. Um, it's not 2019 anymore. My computer is starting to show her age. I was going to point <laughs> it out. Are bit. people yeah, worried 20, about it for what you need to run UE5? Some um, people, some people are. Um, many people are not. Hmm. This is really up to the developer on how serious they get with requirements. So in theory, they could um, they could go through and set enough quality phases and quality stages that it really wouldn't have a negative effect on anybody because they could just Mm -hmm. tweak it down to whatever their machine is able to run. The only thing is, Mm -hmm. I mean, then you're literally reducing quality. So do you really want to do that? So it's, it's going to be more of like a, how low, how low graphic settings do they want to support just visually existing in the world? Well, I can't wait Uh, for alpha two for this reason, because what I had for alpha one was a, uh, I know it's low end, but I had a 1660 super, and that, no matter how I, I rated my graphics, it didn't matter. I was running a, around 20 FPS, which was unacceptable. Again, even though, even though the rest of the rig had no issues, and I had to put in a 3080 to be able to push the frames that I found it acceptable. And that it was only for A1, like everything else seemed to work perfectly. My question mm-hmm. on that is, um, were you streaming at the time? Because, I mean, Alpha 1 was the first one that where they were like, yeah, sure, go ahead and stream it. And so a lot of people had that issue with Alpha 1, but it's because of the settings in your streaming device. Um, that's what fixed it for a lot of people. And I only say that because I had a 1660 as well, and it was running like hot garbage, and my stream looked like crap. And then I changed one setting, and it completely changed everything. I went from having like eight frames per second up to having like 35 which isn't amazing 
but it's also not an amazing graphics card either. Okay, no, I, I was always running around 30, 20, didn't matter if I streamed or not. Like from the minimum settings all the way to, I think there were three, medium, high, whatever. Mm. High, I was running, for example, 20 frame, medium 21 frame, and low 25. Like it didn't make any difference for me whether I was streaming or not. So that's why I was just, when uh, the GB3 brought it up, I was afraid for a lot of people for the machine. I didn't, I know there was no optimization done. And yeah. we'll have to see. But for me, it got me scared at first when I saw that. Yeah, I yeah, also think I mean, there was... Um, Sorry. Uh, I was just going to say that uh, I think there was also, when it came to that, there was something going on with the settings where either they weren't changing anything or you had to make the change and then log out and log back in and then it would it would take effect. Yeah, you had to do mm. something else for it to get to actually take effect and, and change the visual setting. Yeah. And also, yeah, like Keybind. Oh, go ahead. That's that's what I was trying to bring up. <laughs> <laughs> um, much. was that Keybind said like A1 was more of a back end systems test, so they didn't really have a whole lot of optimization. They had optimization compared to APOC, which is where we saw a lot of issues with um especially now I'm scared too. No, don't be scared, don't be scared. Uh I'll 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 elaborate in a minute why I brought that up. Um, but uh APOC definitely wasn't um, much of anything in terms of optimization and that was their first time getting things in there and then they kind of started optimizing and then they were talking about trying to optimize it and optimize it and optimize it and in alpha one we saw a more optimized version but not like the finished product of optimization for the skill sets and everything and perhaps a, a ue5 will help with contra uh, contributing to the optimization of these skills because perhaps that'll offer a bit more um, capabilities for it. But the reason why I was asking about the computer handling it is because um, I know that there are VTubers within this community and I have kind of come to understand uh, firsthand the intensity that is needed off of a graphics card when it comes to being a VTuber in terms of uh, you have your model that you have up and then you have OBS, which uh, there's a, a specific switch in OBS where you swap from GPU to CPU. And that changed a lot um, for even us. And then um, there's also like the game that you're running if that's graphics intensive. But uh, for me, I run a lot of stuff when I was testing this out and my computer was doing fine for the most part, but it, it was definitely showing its age. But that's me pushing it kind of really hard with multiple programs open for a, a, a normal user who is just looking to play a video game and maybe stream it shouldn't be a problem, in my opinion, um, because you're, you're not trying to use a bunch of software at once. <laughs> yeah, should be all right. Should be all right. Um, and Boji, by, I, by the um, way, I have a 1080. <laughs> Yeah, I was just yeah, talking about a ten eighty. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, like Bochi, uh, like you said, that I, I agree. Like every week, it seems like every update they made, it got a little bit better, a little bit better. Mm -hmm. More than a little bit. If I remember, like day one, I had so many issues. I was like, "This is unacceptable, total garbage." And when they said we would bring it down and bring it back up for eight hours later, major improvement. I was like, "How can they work so fast?" I was really impressed. A huge issues got fixed really quickly so the progress mm -hmm. it's like a goddamn rocket for ashes i've never seen this and i've only been uh part of a very few alphas this is like my fourth one for me so not a huge thing for alpha but the way they're they're fixing stuff how they deal with it how fast they dealt with it because that was live alpha one for the three weeks it lasted and a few spot testing here and there it, it was incredible i don't know how they work over there but they did some major magic yeah, uh, the only other company I've seen work that fast would be the Borderlands company with Tiny Tinas. They're like, hey, we introduced a update. Oh, hey, I realized it affected you guys. We'll have an update for you guys tomorrow. We figured out what it might be. And you know, they pushed something really quickly, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But Definitely every single one surprised me when 
they mm-hmm. they would they would just announce on Twitter, hey, yeah, there's there's a thing. Or they would announce in the um, Discord rather, hey, there's a thing, there's an issue, and I think it was hours later, sometime they had a fix for it. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh, but yes, keep in mind, I agree. They do seem to have a pretty solid dev team, and I think that's why they're taking their time and they're hiring people that they think are good fit for the role and that they think will contribute well to the team. And they're constantly hiring. And uh, I think that's really cool. I think we have a lot of decent time ahead of us. I don't I don't want to say years because I don't, I don't want to put that mm-hmm. out there. But a, a, a decent amount of time ahead of us as we see development ramp up really quickly, especially and, and this is a big thing. I'm not sure if you are aware of this, Fauci, but the UE5 allowing them to have multiple people, multiple people logging in versus the one. Oof, that has to shortcut that development time by a lot in that case. For those listening, when, when she means logging in, is that instead of having one person working on one area, it can have many workers, many people designing, drawing, fixing stuff in the same place at the same time, which I understood. I believe that they're actually done transiting to UE4 to UE5. Now they're back on their train, just uh, mm-hmm. I guess building and fixing stuff for us. So yeah, it should go way quicker now. Bigger steps. Yeah. Decades. <laughs> <laughs> you making fun of me, Keybind. You making fun of me. It's okay. I made fun of me too. <laughs> but um man i just seeing the wind pick up and and kind of never (laughs) seeing the wind pick up and and you know dive back down and the subtle changes as it suddenly became the next season um when it like really took effect it was kind of cool to see like the snow melting away or like the flowers slowly blooming that was pretty cool um with slowly because they're sped it up but you know I, I imagine what it might look like in real time um but there's a lot of great questions that people asked as well um like nelson with the weather system asking about uh <laughs> what if any effects will biomes and changes in weather have on dungeons raids and non-instance events and the answer was that weather can affect skills and abilities. I don't know if uh, you saw some of the first videos they're talking about with the fireball during the winter and um, stuff like that. So I thought that was cool that they're keeping that. It may be uh, present in Alpha 2 or it may not be effective weather on your skills. But is there anything that you're hoping to see on like the skill effect based on weather? I bet you that it was towards me. I'm a slow guy here. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Yeah. Um, what I'm expecting is whether it's for regarding whether or not, it, it doesn't matter for me as long as they don't change their mind. For example, once we're going to hear mm-hmm. about combat, whether it's tab targeting, action, or mix, as long as once they, they call the shot, they're going to stay on it. So, for whether, whether I want the fireball to be less powerful in winter or more powerful in the desert, it's going to. I'm going to enjoy that. I, I don't mind which way it's going to go. I, do, I really don't mind. I have no expectation. As long as they, they said they were going to do it, don't back off anymore. Now it's on my to-do list. It's on my grossly list. That's my chocolate. <laughs> this is my chips. It's not something I need. It's extra. It's food for the soul. Don't take it away. Practice don't an altitude. Yeah. Don't take it away. When the, the game comes out, I want to see a fireball freeze. And then I want to see an ice cube land on somebody or something like that. I, I mean, I don't care what they do it. Now it's on the to-do list. Don't remove it. That's my expectation now. When they talk about something, give it to me. Yeah. Can you imagine Steel doing more damage during the uh, really cold or really hot days? Because really cold Steel or really hot Steel? Again, I hope it's going to be a minor effect. More like of a flavor Mm. and a a game changer. Mm -hmm. I hope it's going to change something and give maybe a little advantage. But I don't want it to be a game changer. Otherwise, people are actually going to time sieges if they have more mages or fire mages or whatever to attack at that time. Because if it's if it's a game changer, everybody's going to find that meta and abuse the shit out of it, which I hope they don't. So, well, 
Yeah, see that thing, I, I see what you're saying there, and I totally agree that it, it should have not like a game-changing impact, but I think enough people focusing on even a minor impact is going to have a major impact on a siege. So okay just something that's a little bit more than flavor, like uh, they were talking about uh, in, on really hot days, the fireball AOE is going to get bigger and it's going to shrink down in winter or something. Um, that's that's pretty cool because you also got to keep in mind if they time out the seasons rotating just properly, the uh, timed events that are going to happen once a month are going to experience every single season. So every single play style and every single character build is going to have its month to shine. They're no, all going to no, rotate 100% through. Agree. And, and 100% agree. 100% agree. I want it to have an effect. And I'm, I'm going to refer to other games here. The first game I saw this having an effect on my life and that I really enjoyed was called uh, Chrono Trigger, I believe, on one mm -hmm. of the Nintendo platforms. And when you did two spells together, it didn't depend on the season, though. Now I'm mixing two things, I guess. But if they could do something like that, that during a season, you can have like a different combo if you have two people doing something and the season helps you achieve that bigger, like said, circle of impact or something. I'm all for mm -hmm. that. I just don't want it to see like a... I don't know, 200% damage increase because it's in the desert or oh, something. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't want to see something That would be broken. a bit excessive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so people yeah. have to work to see a result. So I don't want it to... Yeah, you, you said it good. There we go. Look like your uh, sorry, I was, I was responding to something real quick. Ravon says, or like an ice mage has <laughs> an ice spell projectile as a skill, and on winter, the projectile has a chill effect that stacks up with other ice spells. That sounds really awesome, actually. Um, <laughs> I'm assuming you saw what I was... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Never. <laughs> Curse you, never. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think that would be really, really cool. Um, also, speaking of narrer, <laughs> the silver mm -hmm. lighting and all this waiting and letting the dev team take their time is making a great game. Um, er, in in making a great game is that even if the wait sucks right now, once the game is out, all misery all misery will be forgotten and we won't even care anymore because we'll, we wouldn't have to have waited anymore. It's there. And new people won't wait. It, it'll already be there. We're gonna be like that one time at LineCon, um, kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> but yeah. Following Nera's uh, mind pad, there we, we will all forget when the game comes out. I think Alpha Two is gonna have the same effect. We're all saying like we don't want to see it, the game in twenty twenty six or twenty twenty five. We want it as soon as possible. But people mm -hmm. will stop. I think begging for the game as soon as the persistent alpha 2 comes out then you'll be able to see some on twitch or have a little bit of more flavor and ask your own question and i think it's going to make people wait a lot more patient if you want the final product to be perfect so alpha 2 persistent is going to be the next and the last big step not not even the launch i think you can wait for that afterwards yeah that's fair that's fair yeah that's going to be a, a really big thing that they need to to nail down, get it right, and um, I think I think it, that'll be that'll be just fine. That'll appease a lot of people. Um, they also were talking about the weather having an effect on boss mechanics and abilities. Mm. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, like there's going to be variability in skill trees, and they'll introduce a dynamicism. That was a new word for me to the encounter, and. Um, I thought that was really interesting too, because not only is the AI learning from you, but the AI is like, oh, this is less effective during this season. Hmm. And, uh, you know. I didn't perceive it like, like you did, I guess. I heard that thing too. And all that my brain registered on this one is that the same boss could have three or four fighting pattern. That's what I understood. Like if it has a weakness during mm -hmm. winter, the only thing is instead of it being a tank and spank in winter, and in a summer, it's a DPS race. And I don't know, that's how my brain saw it. It was just changing mechanics. So you would have to learn four ways on how to beat one guy if you don't want to have it the hard way, if you want to do it the easy way. Yeah. 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 Um, hmm. I think that's one of those things that I'll have to reserve opinion on because I've 
got to really see how it works and what exactly they mean by that dynamicism. Like it's, I think maybe it just means that it's going to change behavior based on season, not necessarily because of what you're doing because of the season, but because of how that specific monster or that specific boss can take advantage of that season. Mm. Like if it's a, mm. if it's a fire breathing dragon, it might not do as many fire breath attacks in winter time. It might do a lot more claws and tail swipes and things like that. But when summertime comes around, it's going to be all fire all the time. It's a barbecue. Let's go. <laughs> so boss believed be... in weather boost to like put Pokemon? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> I th I think um, that's where my mind goes with it, but I mean, we'll have to we'll have to wait and see exactly what they mean when they get it all keyed in themselves. There's a couple more questions that people within our community, specifically that I recognized, asked. If you don't, if you don't mind, if we like cover those real quick, because they're all kind of interrelated a little bit. Yeah. Um, so Golid was talking about boss fights, since we're already on the topic. Um, how challenging will raid boss mechanics be, given that players will need to simultaneously fight other players while also fighting the boss? Uh, the answer was, it depends. The great thing about this encounter system is that it has a wide scale ability from encounters that some consider easy, given their com composition, to those that may find it impossible until they get their gear to a certain stage. The level of interaction with other players is predicated on the encounter itself. Some may be instanced. The big ones that might land in contention land <laughs> "Quote unquote," are given some of the best slot and gear, so you can get the, uh, that you can get in the game. That makes these important to uh, be contested. Uh, risk versus reward. Not everyone will be a winner. And what are what are your thoughts on that, Bauti? Oh, oh no, Gruntag! Holy Yeah, Michael. I'm making a bad guess. I'm, I'm so Thank sorry. Thank you I so much, out. by the way. And I went like Vertag, I just sucked uh, Gruntag and I went, I jumped on that bag wagon. I, I did not pay attention to your voice, Bree. You can put me in the corner there. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, that's fine. That's the more important thing to pay attention to anyway. Gruntag, thank you so much. So much appreciation. Yes, thank you so, so, so very much. Holy uh, welcome Over in. Here, I was like, Clandinus, Iraj, Azriel, welcome in. Uh, Reaper yeah. and Disorda, welcome in. Welcome to Tavern. Yeah, I was doing the same thing. I was looking through the questions like, what else? What, what's another question we can highlight that was really nifty and really interesting? And then I look up and I just see, yeah. give the dear one sub to blah, 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 blah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Oh, gosh. So you're going to have um, to repeat that monster question. It, it sounded like a big one and I, I will pay attention. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. It was, it's all good. Go ahead. Yeah, the, the super uh, short, you know, TLDR type uh, version of it was how challenging will boss mm -hmm. raid mechanics be given that players will need to simultaneously fight other players while also fighting the boss. And Steven basically gonna... said... Oh, I was going to say, Steve, Steven's answer uh, was basically that uh, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of scalability and it's going to also depend on the composition of the, the raid itself, the group themselves. And some things are going to be purposely very difficult to do with other players in the area because it's supposed to be contested. And it's supposed to be incredibly hard to get that boss down and get credit for it because they're going to have some of the best in slot gear you can get in the game. Okay, well, my, my answer to that, again, just a point of view, I don't have enough data for this, but I don't think that's going to occur as much as, occur as people think it's going to happen. Because again, with every um, uh, line of arc that uh, Steven talked about, to be able to steal the kill, you must do, for example, like at least 40% of the damage on the monster or so. There's very strict ways to steal the target. It's not just tag and hit mm -hmm. and you're done, right? And have the finishing blow. That's not how it works. So for, for you to go through the trouble of following somebody through a dungeon that's open world and to be able to try to steal the last boss or just to be like, I'm going to call it a dick like to be like those douchebags just trying to like do trouble and go again mm -hmm. uh, red as a, a corrupted player and not just a combatant i don't think it's going to be worth it on the end so i don't think it's going to cure that much and if it does it's, it's going to require a lot of prepping on those that are going to want to steal the, the target and all that so is it going to make it harder for those they might 
make them wipe. That that's fully understandable that, that if that's their goal. But I think it's just going to be a fun thing. It's just to keep us on our toes at all time and give it that double flavor that that um, to make it worthwhile. You know, you got to put in the, the time to have the reward. There, they're saying that all the time. I don't have the right expression in English here. Sorry. Mm. No worries. No worries. But yeah, I see what you're saying there, and I, I don't think it's going to occur terribly often if it's designed correctly. But the the only concern I have is it being designed correctly, because if it is set up mm-hmm. to where you need to do forty percent of the damage, then what yeah. happens if say four different groups come in and they all do about twenty five percent of the damage? The thing dies and nobody gets credit. So then it's got to go to majority right. damage. So you could legitimately let somebody get 40% of the boss's health down, start killing them, they get it down to 45%, and then your guild or your group takes it down the other 55% after the other group gets wiped out. Or, you know, even time it down to where you take over at 51%. You kill the last people in the other group at, you know, 51% and take it over. Um, Mm. But then also, what about uh, if there's a timer? Say if I, two, I don't if have two all the numbers. Go- I don't have the percentage exactly. I, I threw forty percent out real quick. I'm sure somebody in chat could correct me here. Uh, I don't know if it's sixty oh, yeah. percent if you're coming in late. It's not a real number I, I put out there. Sorry. Oh yeah, no, no, no. I, I I get it. I was also using it kind of as a number just to give a different scenario. Like if it was a specific percent, there might be a situation where you wouldn't meet that specific percent. So it's got to be the majority instead. But then even the majority. What if uh, you know? Um, Two group, two groups are, are kind of running through the dungeon at the same time. One happens to be just behind the other. Group one gets in there and does like 51% of the damage and completely wipes. And the other group happens to be there to pick it up. Starts doing damage and they're like, Hey, we're holding it here for you. Come back and kill the thing. We're just keeping it alive. Come get it. And the first group <laughs> never comes back. They just, nah, we're, we're, nah, throw it in the towel. We're leaving. So the, the second group, after taking it up and being the only group to do any damage to it for like a 10 minutes or whatever, just let's say a long time because they were holding it for the first group, right? Okay. And then they wouldn't get case, credit for the kill either. I'm going to use it an old saying we used to use, wait and shoot, wait and shoot. It's, it means just you got to have to see, wait and, and see what's going to happen at this point because yeah. it's a good question, but how, at what percentage, what timer... Is it going to enrage? Can you like make it last forever that fight, or is it going to reset at one point? Or does the percentage of which I don't know. Let, let's see an alpha two. Yeah, it's going to be a whole lot of whole lot of whole lot of playing around, a whole lot of testing. It's a good thing we're still in testing yeah. for the game, right? <laughs> right. It's time to bounce all these um, ideas around. Ravon asks. Now, a real question is if Alpha 2 arrives and a lot of streamers play it, then what happens to everyone who watched those streams, uh, who know where certain points of interest are, and the feeling of discovery is gone at day one of official release? Like, the only solution I see is making each server have a different geographic layout. And um, Clan Dennis, Clan Dennis uh, was saying that, you know, the no two servers are the same. So like they're going to basically if, if a streamer is on server one and uh, they're not on server two, then they'll have a completely different node built and node layout. Um, but Ravon responded with, uh, yes, there's no doubt about that, but it, that leans towards more of the actions on the player rather than the geographical layout of the world. Um, so is it like in server one where an iron mine is in the riverlands while server two the same mine is at the winter biome um that's a great question actually and i wanted to uh, chat about that for a second um for one uh going back to day one of the official release nothing is gonna look the same as like a week from a later a week later from that release because then people have gone in and they have at least uh as long as we're not talking about uh the early joining in like the two day because then the nodes are going to be turned off for xp but um the going into it 
after a week, it, everything's going to look different because people have dispersed into different areas. Um, not It's not going to be World of Warcraft where you know where Orgrimmar is, you know where um, the, the other places. I'm, I'm losing track of those, but uh, <laughs> you're not going to know where those places are. Um, it's going to be built differently. Um, I mean, there could be your Winstead node, sure. But yeah, the Stormwind... Uh, Silver Moon, all of those. Um, but uh, I was trying to actually bring up what, what the. Um, I thought that was another big one on the Alliance side, but it's Darnassus. been years since I played. Darnassus. Yeah, I like Darnassus. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> but. Can you tell I was mainly a horde player? I didn't really play on the alliance side, <laughs> but um, basically, those are going to change. They're going to um, happen at different times, and I, even even specific things like I don't know, a dragon popping out of a volcano could be something that only happens during summer if a specific node is built up near it. Well, so if we're I going don't back think to WoW, I mean, you haven't killed yeah. enough alliance with your horde otherwise you would know where Darnassus is to kill him <laughs> I didn't do PvP <laughs> so no, yeah that's accurate you know, uh, to answer those two guys in chat is that um, they could both have Darnassus one might have the full grown capital city the other one might be burned down and nobody goes there depending on which version of the server or iteration you are and so they're just going to have mm -hmm. different size and different things to do there so no you will not be able to build the perfect path the meta way where to get those special uh, gathering or iron or browns or whatever it's going to be because these are going to change with either the seasons or how big the place goes or grows or whatever whichever node gets bigger gets more of them so no there will not be two servers alike so you will get like 20 different game kind of yeah different kind of flavor yeah so I, I'm, yeah. A, I'm with clan on this one I think it yeah. I think it also goes back to rule number one of all that is when watching streams about a game that's still in development, if you care about the feeling of discovery, you should not be watching streams of a game that's still in development. If you actually care about that feeling of discovering things yourself and the feeling of bumping into something and, and seeing something new and uh, you know, mind boggling and wow. Is, yeah, first rule about AOC. We don't talk about AOC exactly. Like if you care about if you care about being surprised and discovering everything, you really shouldn't watch all this I've stuff been, ahead of time. I've been seeing that since number mm -hmm. one. Everybody when they ask me like, should I buy an Alpha One key or an Alpha Two key? I'm like, no. I'm like you did it. I was weak. I was very weak. I was tempted. I had nothing else in my life. If you can't resist all yeah. of it, close your internet. Close YouTube just have a reminder in your emails to tell you when the game comes out or something you'll see it on tv i don't care wait for it don't <laughs> don't waste any of no seriously it's fun to be in the community and be part of the building adventure and all that for sure but if you can lock out everything and keep the entire surprise for launch day you will be like a kid on christmas your first christmas the biggest gift ever the mm -hmm. nicest unwrapping you can ever mm -hmm. have that's like the thing I'm going to try to do, because eventually they're going to be releasing main story quest stuff, right? I'm going mm -hmm. to try my best to see if I can resist doing main story quest in any kind of testing mode. I know it needs tested, but that's yeah, also, I'm one of those people that I want to experience this and I want to experience that. And going through and testing when it might be broken, I think I'm going to wait as long as I can before I go into that so that a lot of the bugs have been fixed and I will be testing things that fell through the cracks and I'll be testing mechanics and you know uh, things that are happening in the game instead of actual storyline like storyline stuff I don't mm. want to get jacked up I cannot back this up 100% but the feeling I got from uh, Steven and his team Mr. Sharif is that uh, these are all bogus quests they're just like they're going to do one quest of each type for example to test the quest in the system I don't think you're going to get the full story on and if you if they did somehow put a little bit of story, the real story in it, I'm sure you're capable of just not reading, like in WoW. Like, pretend it's been your 15 year of playing the game. Just don't read it. Skip and just go follow the hero. Oh the my God. Tech deck, yes. Yeah. Hopefully somebody will test the binding desk. <laughs> yes, please. But, um, yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing. Somebody has to test it, so I mean, I'm not going to fully hold myself back. I'm just going to try to delay as much as possible so that yeah. I, I don't get, like, 
into a main story quest and and then just something snaps and I can't continue it and or something breaks and like it skips ahead or it, it misses a step or something like that and then I spoil what's going to happen in the middle or or whatever. Mm-hmm. But um that that I think is going to be one thing to keep in mind. The other one is it would be really cool is if they could just scramble up which nodes are what type of node that right there would would have enough surprise for people that if you at least know that you're not going to have a military node there maybe maybe it was randomized for the the alpha test but then they just change what type of node is going to land every which way so it could be scientific or military or, or whatever and it might change up that right there will change a lot of the feeling Mm-hmm. Yeah, Al Capone. Um, yeah, no release. I was actually set. gonna. Mm-hmm. Oh, popping that one up. <laughs> yeah, I was yes. gonna say I was gonna bring that up when you were done talking, but go for it. You're already going. Yeah, as of right now, the the main uh, prevailing theory amongst everybody is the next alpha phase is going to be 2023, the beginning of next year. Um, that's the. The prevailing theory. There's been no official word on anything except for not yet. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are thinking 2024 slash 2025 release dates, just because of the pace that they're going at. But we'll see. We'll see how the pace changes now that they're doing Unreal Engine five. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Thank you for asking, though, honestly. Uh, and uh, by the way, I don't know how other people are. I knew there was a series, and there's probably going to be another when Alpha 2 comes out. By the way, thank you for the follow. I see that. Welcome to the tavern. Um, there's probably going to be another series of uh, veterans getting annoyed at newbies asking the same old questions. But we here at the Golden Feather are more than happy to answer the same question over and over and over. Because we realize not all of y'all have been paying attention this whole time. Like Umbra, who popped in earlier and asked if it was also. <laughs> Hi, Umbra. Calling you out. Who's been um, around since like good. day one. So Yeah, yeah. So um, He just yeah, doesn't pay as much things. attention and that's fine. Uh, and honestly, we love having, there's uh, a friend of mine, Sideron, who we've had on a couple of times, who was following Ashes initially and then hasn't followed for a very long time. And occasionally we like to bring him on and be like, so this is what you've missed in the last like year or so. And the reaction is just priceless because it's like, what? Oh my gosh, they've changed so much. And um, I don't know. It's kind of nice. And I kind of understand where both Bauchi and Vertec were coming from with their points was, um, you know, if you want to be truly surprised by the game, I mean, one thing you could do, they don't really show too much and, and this could be a pro or con of Ashes. Tune into their live streams and that's about it. Don't, don't pay attention too much to what's going on or trying to get a key or whatever. If you're trying to keep up with development, but trying to stay surprised by things. Um, or if you don't want to keep up with development and you just want to see the finished game because you're like, oh, God, when is this thing coming out? Because it's like, you know, line con when you're in line and you're waiting to get through to get your, you know, your badge and stuff. You're just like, this line takes forever. But then when you come the next day and there's no line, you're just like going straight through because the hard part was the waiting was already done. Everybody else has their entry. That's like us doing all of the testing and then somebody coming in after the game is launched. Like the hard part of waiting is gone because you kept yourself preoccupied. You went and did something else while people, were, while other people were waiting to get in. Yeah, um, just every six months or so, I, pop in, check the pulse, see when people think it's going to be about a year from now and then start popping in every three months. <laughs> there you go. That's actually pretty smart. But uh, in terms of the lore being leaked i guess during like beta 2 right before launch i don't know i still have a feeling that they will put in some silly quest line stuff just to fill in the blanks or even just nothing blank it out um just to keep because you know how steven is with his lore he's just like this is my baby i'm not sharing it you can't have it and i think um he knows that this is an important thing to not share too much of towards the end has there been more lore? Um, 
I I mean, there's technically little lore bits with each month's uh, cosmetics, but um, I I don't think there's been like a big lore dump recently outside of like the November time. No. no yeah. No, no big lore dump. No big, no big nuggets. Just the cosmetic stuff, and occasionally, once in a while, Stephen will say like a little slip of something here or there, but nothing. Yeah. Nothing major. Nothing worth Sun getting. Under a certain. If you want to save yeah. your time, uh, Sun, Sun Frog, you can go on the wiki. And to be honest, there's a few pages about. I call them the Lich King, but I don't want to say names. You can go read it about it. There's a there's a good part of the lore uh, from the magical side, the old Vera, the new Vera, all in the wiki. It's, it's about two page long. It's not much, but you're gonna you're gonna catch up what we've been reading for the past five years and gathering on that wiki. If you want to link it, yeah. I can link it otherwise. Oh, yeah. Go for it. Um, mm -hmm. Should should be good to do it, I believe. Uh, I hope it doesn't time you out, because I think we fixed that. Someone was trying to clip, uh, post a clip at one point, and it timed them out, and we're like, yeah, no, we gotta, gotta fix that. Ah, yeah, mm. sorry. Regulars, wow. <laughs> okay. We So we made it from subscribers to regulars. You gotta watch... <laughs> Better watch our stream for at least five hours. <laughs> well, I've been. I, <laughs> yes. I've been warned. Yes. I You've will, been warned. I will copy and paste that back out. That yeah. is there you go. what he was trying to put out there for you. But uh, also, we had a. No, no, it's all good. We had a, a hiccup with the bot at one point, so it completely erased who the regulars were. And so there's people who've been watching our stream for like a, a few years at this years. point that just became yeah. a regular again. And they're like, wait, what? I wasn't a regular before? And I was like, the bot, you know, did bot things. I'm sorry, um, I'll do <laughs> bot stuff. <laughs> but <laughs> I do think they're going to try to block that out, though, um, to keep as much of the, the surprise in there as possible. Yeah, I think um, that's right. You just brought back to mind because I, I thought of something to say a little bit ago and then it completely escaped. But you just brought it back into mind. I know um, during one of the live streams, yeah, Stephen had said that he wanted to keep all of the lore tight to the chest and not release any of it until launch because, you know, surprise and find it out yourself and yada yada. But then uh, some of the team has been kind of talking sense into him that, you know, if you want it tested and you want it to not be broken when people do experience it for their first time, you got to put it out for testers to play around with it ahead of time. So that they find out yeah. if it is broken. Yeah. Hey. But I mean, <laughs> like, story-wise, yes, though. Like, quest, quest line stuff is more what I was referring to, though. I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think Steven is crafty enough and his team are good enough. Uh, Vertec, if you want to jump in into Alpha 2, I don't think... That, I think they're going to hide everything. They're going to change name, places. For example, a quest that would have a text this long normally, they're just going to write in the text, like, no story, like, go see this guy, he's a, he's there, go collect or kill or whatever. Go help our here. friend. Hi, friend, I'm yeah. here to help. Thank yeah, you for helping much. me. Yeah. I think they got to censor it for yeah. you. They're just going to okay, put the mechanic bye. behind. Yeah. Yeah. Be able to jump in. They're not going to spoil anything for you. Yeah, I think a lot of it's going to yeah. probably hang out until, like, beta 2. Beta 2 is probably when it's going to be the... If you want to know all of the story, if you think you can make it through, Beta 2 is the time to go and push. I'm going to hold you on that. Yeah. I believe you're going to be there, both of you, or both going to be in every testing until you get, you get to test everything you wanted to test yourself. So you're sure you're going to choose the right class, the right race, the right starting point. I think you're going to test the game for sure to help them evolve the game, but you're also going to... I'm going to talk for myself, not for you guys, but I think I'm going to do it until I have all my answers before I shut it down and say, <laughs> I'll wait for the, the, the due date. There you go. There you go. Yeah. I know I'm going to be probably finding a class that I feel good going all the way through to the end of the game with. And I'll be testing everything I can and trying to break everything I can with that one class. Because if I go through and I'm testing a class and I need to get it up to a certain level to test it and see if I like it, I may as well keep the character, right? So I may as well wait until after <laughs> the no, betas theater. are done. Uh, it's been confirmed. There's no two left feet. I, we yeah, heard that live. No, no three feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think for me, I'm primarily planning on testing which versions of uh, cleric archetype 
secondaries that I want with my cleric healing primary type. And then if there's a different class that I'd want to play as like an altar class, because I like to heal for the first like primary thing. But um, in terms of if we need more damage or whatever, I could probably just have a secondary character that I have leveled up on like a, a different server or whatever. Same server. I don't really care. Depends on where we are, you know, what, what server we're on, etc. But oh, um, yeah. at hey, least for the testing, I plan to try that. There's that. There's that. Yeah, it's about. like a black and green. Yep. Where's he? Start he does it a lot. <laughs> it was right, right there. Oh, he does the purple one there. There it is. There's the green dash. Oh, yeah, that sorry. looks way too cool uh, to I, keep it to I can only, only I can only look at it on stream, so <laughs> you're yeah. like, there's the purple one and I'm still waiting. <laughs> like where where is it? <laughs> but yeah, I see what you're saying. The purple one looks like the what they're talking about with the blink. The yeah, blink, the yeah. mage blink. Mm hmm I think the other it's one like, is just a mage blink flavored something. I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah, I don't know why I got such a guy. It looks yeah, like yeah. what I would imagine a rogue, like a rogue influenced or a uh, ranger influenced, maybe. Because it has like that green and yeah. like a dash. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. But uh, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. However, it is already 8.50. You're going to be the bearer anyway, aren't you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, Somebody has to be the timekeeper. Somebody has to be the timekeeper. We'll just be here all night. <laughs> all right. Well, then, but, um, before you do, let me go ahead and uh, pop up some of this fan art that we uh, saw come up in the past a couple of days here. Oh, my gosh. Um, fan art. Yes. There's just Such there's two bits that art. I wanted to put up. One of them was for Fan Friday, and I thought it was pretty darn spiffy. You will probably enjoy okay. this one. And this is... Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this name, but I've seen it a couple times. Ricene, Ricene, Ryasani, something along those lines, um, with their rendition Ooh. of a pyre. And that was actually the Fan That's Friday. Awesome. Why do I feel like that pyre should be a bunk? Right? Yeah, with that little that little design there. Yeah, looks like an, a monk design almost, a monk pyre. Mm -hmm. And there's actually like the class. tree branches making the uh, the shoulders, mm -hmm. or like the the bark mm -hmm. rather. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's a really cool one. Uh, I definitely dig that one. Then there's also yeah. this other fun one that I'm going. Wait, to... is she T posing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and there's this other one. Uh, somebody named Brandon J on the forums. Um, wanted to play around with the Ashes logo and do something interesting mm. and thought of, hey, why don't I generate it with AI? That would be pretty cool, mm. right? So they, I guess they plugged in some Moltres samples from Pokemon and um, here was the result. Okay. I'm interested. <laughs> It actually, it, it does indeed look very interesting. It's very uh, oh. abstract. Abstract impressionist, maybe? Something in the middle there? Yeah. It looks very oil painting. That's painting -y. definitely interesting. It's a make of uh, abstract and pouring somehow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but there's like fire on the ocean and then other flaming birds up there in the sky and like a... What well, looks like a hummingbird robin on the left side flying out of the flame. Phoenix in a cloud. Yeah. Phoenix in a cloud. That's awesome. Yeah. No monk in AOC. Is there not a cross? I know. I, like two archetypes I, that come I to meet know. and make a monk? Oh uh, my goodness. Cool. I, have to look. I, I, I'm not 100% sure, but when she said monk, I was like, it does look like a monk because of the orange color and the vest and everything. It's cloth. So it felt very monkey. No, no, not, not, yeah. not very monkey. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Bad translation monkish. in my brain. Yeah, monkish, sorry. I like it. No, it's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> I loved it. No, it's... I've called I've called that monkey as well. Yeah. But somebody can confirm um, it. I'm pretty sure there's no monk in Ash. No, you're, you're, you're right. I don't, I don't see one here. 
in the entire chart. Yeah. There is no monk. Mm -mm. Oops, I gotta That's stop That's kind doing of surprising, that. and I never realized that. You learn yep. something new every There's day. There's no monk. There's no druid. Oh. <laughs> uh, I've been playing a lot of D&D, uh, &D, though, so my mind is on D&D, &D, so as soon as I saw that pyre, I was like, ooh, monk. <laughs> Yeah, uh, not a. That's. I cannot believe I missed that one. <laughs> I can't believe Sorry. that Chibi missed that one. I didn't want to burst. Oh, I didn't miss Sorry. it. I said I said there wasn't a monk in, in ashes. Oh. I had not That's heard that. All right. Well, yeah. But and now we all know. I feel smarter. I've learned something today. So has the AI. The AI has learned how to draw. Yeah. Right. It's pretty right, cool. So pretty cool with art. That, I think we've covered a lot of the the big things there, and it is getting actually it's one, again one of our longer uh, episodes. Mm hmm So, Bochi, 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 Bochi. Sir. Do you have anything you would like to tell everybody? Anything you'd like to shout out as far as? Uh, projects, websites, uh, things that you want to look into, or just say goodbye in however way you wish to say. Thank you for the invite. Uh, for everybody who showed up, I love you all. I hope I'm going to see all of you on the battlefield. And if not before, I uh, can't wait for Alpha 2. And I got nothing to uh, shout out. I don't have anything for uh, media or anything like that. I'm sorry. Twitch. Follow us, Twitch. Yeah. I, oh, I, I do stream once in a while on Twitch. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. Uh, same there nickname. There is a something. There you go. We got you. <laughs> we got you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Yes, I, I, I do try. I've learned a little bit on how to do Twitch. Uh, I'm still learning a lot. Thank you for everybody who helped me doing this. And you guys actually helped it a lot. I'm going to swing back. I think it was two, three years ago. Shoot. Yeah, three years ago. Um, in Alpha 1, actually. During the Alpha 1. Uh, my wife wanted to try the game real quick, so she sat at my spot while I went away for, I don't know, grab a drink or something. And we got snapped mm -hmm. for that, by the way. Margaret was uh, watching. I got warned pretty bad for that one. <laughs> oh, no. That was my, oh, no. Yeah, it was my first strike. But when she got on, uh, my, my Q count went from 3 to, like, 15. And then a few seconds afterwards, and I'm going to blame you guys, I believe. You raided us. I didn't know what a raid was back then. And she went up to like mm. 80 something people. I was like, how are you doing it? Cleavage, unfair. But no, it was a raid. I didn't know it was a raid at first. <laughs> I was playing my wife. I was like, ah, oh, this system is broken. <laughs> but uh, that's one. I, I, yeah, whatever. Thank you guys. Cleavage, great. what? <laughs> I thought it was that. I thought it was just because she's always in her bikini in the summer and stuff like that. So I was like, oh, you're one of those. And it works. And I didn't notice it was the raid that worked more. But either way, yeah. All fun time. <laughs> My goodness, my goodness. Oi. But yeah, fun times either way. Well, uh, glad you didn't get in too much trouble for that. Because I know, uh, mm -hmm. if I recall, I think I think I remember that day. Yeah, you were, you were just kind of like hanging out there. And it was really just the uh, like the music of the, the launcher that was playing in the background, really. It was, wasn't like you guys no, were like streaming that anything. that was my second strike. I got two strikes. I got one from Margaret for sharing account. That's what she said, which is fine. It's my oh, account. Okay. It's not hers. And I told her, Margaret, my wife owns me. Like, <laughs> there's no point to this. But no, not allowed to share at any point. And the second strike with, uh, I think she doesn't work anymore, but uh, Lieutenant Toast. Because uh, I didn't notice, I did not know how it worked. Not an excuse, but I'm not good enough, I guess, at that time with Twitch. And they could hear the clashing of my sword in the background, even though I had music on top. They're, they could not see my screen. I knew about the uh, NDA for not showing a screen. I did not know about the audio was getting through my monitor. Whatever. Oh, okay. So that's when I got well, from uh, looking at those. My second yeah, stream. And then I stopped streaming. I actually stopped streaming. I was so afraid of getting my account locked. I did not want to lose my account or anything. So I just stopped until Apple One. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, it can be touchy. Uh, it can well, be touchy. The good news is I believe A2 is supposed to not be NDA, so... A1 wasn't, so I don't see... I thought... Are they going to uh, put another The NDA initial one? part was. The initial part of A1 was, I believe. And then yep. they yeah, released it. Yeah, for like it. two weeks and then, um, it, and then they released it. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, that's when I was able to come but, back. I was afraid, but Alpha Two, no NDA, yeah. right? As as far as as far as I know, yeah, the spot testing as is far probably as what we know, be yeah. NDA. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say with with reserves to potential spot testing. Hi, Smatterski, welcome in. Actually, we are about to read Tech Deck, which is play, who is playing mm -hmm. Lost Ark. Um, so we're glad you're able to stop in, but unfortunately, our uh, two-hour podcast at this point is uh, yeah. ending. <laughs> So, timing is amazing. Uh, thank you so much, Fauci, for being on. I had so much fun chatting with you about this stuff, and it's really nice hearing your your viewpoint of things. And um, I, if you ever want to be on again, you just let us know. Anytime, my pleasure. Uh, <laughs> everybody who stopped in to join us and have some conversation, thank you so much. We really appreciate you. We would not be here without you. We'd have no reason to be here without you. Uh, thank you, Gruntag, mm -hmm. for being a superhero with some subs and throwing them out there. And Clandinus, uh, the, for the, the friendly banter about the uh, pay-to-play or not early on. Um, we, may mm -hmm. not, we may not have the same idea on that, but, you know, that's, that's okay. That's okay. Everyone's You're just using different ideas. semantics. I believe Clan yeah, actually yeah, yeah, has yeah. access to Alpha 1, and he still considers it pay-to-win. Whatever. But it's a good yeah, point. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a thing. And to be honest, if that's the worst we have to worry about with pay-to-win, I'm... I'll be happy. I'll be happy. If that's the biggest thing. So I just like the happens, difference. We thrilled. Yeah. Yeah. yeah either I way, also I like, like the difference in points viewpoints view. in general. Yeah. yeah you knew where I was going on, with that. Yeah. I've changed my mind on quite a few things just by listening to the other side and hear what they have to say. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. we love you all. You could have been doing anything out there. You could have been experiencing weather yourself instead of mm, listening to us and talking with us about weather. But you were mm -hmm. here. So we love it. Thank you guys. And we'll see you next Friday with our next guest.